In early 1941, before America's involvement in World War II, there was a worry that Britain could fall, and that the US then would lack the ability for a strategic bombing campaign against Germany. The United States Army Air Corps saw the need for a new class of bomber, that could reach Europe, and return to bases in North America. The new bomber would need a combat range of at least 5,700 miles, which would give it intercontinental range. An initial request was made by the U.S. Army Air Corps in April 1941. The request asked for a bomber that had a 450 miles per hour top speed, a cruising speed of 275 miles per hour, and a service ceiling of 45,000 feet, which would make it invulnerable for ground-based anti-aircraft weapons. The requested range was 12,000 miles. The technology of the time could not live up to these requirements, so they were reduced to a range of 10,000 miles, and a cruising speed between 240 and 300 miles per hour. The required service ceiling was lowered to 40,000 feet, making the bomber vulnerable to one specific rare type of German anti-aircraft gun. In 1943, the U.S. Army Air Forces submitted a letter of intent to convey, ordering an initial run of 100 B-36s, before any prototype had been completed and tested. The delivery of the first prototype was planned in August 1945, and the delivery of the second in October 1946, but both were delayed. Ironically, the B-36 was first unveiled on August 20, 1945, three months after the victory of the Allies in Europe. The first flight took place on August 8, 1946. In the beginning of the Cold War, American military planners saw the need for a bomber capable of delivering the first-generation atomic bombs. These bombs were very large. At the time, the B-36 was the only American aircraft with a range and payload to be able to carry these bombs from North America to the Soviet Union. The B-36 was modified to be able to carry the huge Mark 16 hydrogen bomb. While the B-36 had the capacity needed, it was a piston-powered aircraft, and would be facing first-generation jet fighters and enemy air forces. It was slow, and could not refuel in mid-air, but its cruising altitude put it out of range of most interceptors of the time. Until the B-52 Stratofortis became operational in 1955, the B-36 would be the primary nuclear weapons delivery vehicle of the Strategic Air Command. Compared to the aircraft of the time, the B-36 was enormous. It was two-thirds longer than the B-29 Superfortress, and remains large even compared to modern-day aircraft like the C-5 Galaxy. It had six 28-cylinder Pratt & Whitney R4360 radial engines, mounted in an unusual pusher configuration. The later version B-36D introduced a pair of General Electric J4719 jet engines, near the end of each wing, to improve takeoff performance and top speed over target. The jets were also retrofitted to B-36Bs. The B-36 had a crew of 15, and a pressurized flight deck and crew compartment, with a pressurized tunnel through the bomb bay. In the rear compartment, there were six bunks and a dining galley. The aircraft could carry up to 87,200 pounds of bombs, and it had six remote-controlled retractable gun turrets, as well as fixed tail and nose turrets. The first aircraft entered service in 1948. The B-36s conducted training and test operations, and stood ground and airborne alert. The RB-36 variants were used for strategic reconnaissance, such as photoreconnaissance and mapping. The efforts were limited to the borders, and not the heartland of the Soviet Union. The B-36 was phased out of the Strategic Air Command beginning in 1956. In 1959, the aircraft type was retired. No B-36 ever fired a single shot in combat. In total, 384 B-36 peacemakers were produced.